In astrophysics, we talk a lot about taking the spectrum of a star, and it turns out if you look at the spectrum of a star, you can classify stars uh, by what we call spectral classes. And we have this weird sort of set of letters here. So first of all, maybe we'll uh, talk about this. So first thing we do, um, spectral class, uh, we'll say it depends on Um, well, how the spectrum looks. So how a star's spectrum looks. Okay, so depending on what we see when we look at the spectrum of a star, we can then sort of classify them. Um, and they're classified in a kind of a, a weird looking way at first. This, however, this is key for what we call main sequence stars. So if a star is a main sequence, what that means, it means the core is uh, burning you know, hydrogen to helium. So while a star has this happening in its core, we say it's a main sequence star. So keep in mind that this is what's really important here. Now we actually have, uh, well, we can make a list actually of sort of spectral class and we can actually have an equivalent temperature. Remember that'll be in Kelvin. Remember this is sort of the surface temperature or the black body temperature. That's what's really important here. So the first spectral class is called O. And that one has a temperature of, well, 33,000 or larger. So these are the hottest ones. So something that has an equivalent black body temperature of 33,000 Kelvin or larger, we call that an O-class star. And then if something's a B-class star, um, well, it's around 10,500 to 33,000. So that's something like this. The next type of star we have is A. So A-class stars here are 7,500 to 10,500 Kelvin. Uh, around that. Actually, um, I've often seen it written as just 10,000, but something like that at least. So around that, let's see. Um, now we have F stars, and F stars have a temperature of around 6,000 um, up to about 7,500 Kelvin, of course. Um, then we'll come G stars, and that will be something that it's between, let's say, 5,200 um, up to around 6,000. And then we have K stars. And those are 3,700 Kelvin up until about 5,200. And finally, we have M stars. And those are 2,000 to around 3,700. Now, if you remember, uh, what we were just learning about before, um, at least in the previous videos, we've been looking at how an equivalent temperature tells you something about its color, right? Because we had Wien's displacement law, which told us that the wavelength, the maximum wavelength was around 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, divided by the temperature, right? And if that's the case, then that tells us then that, well, a temperature has to do with a wavelength. And a wavelength then can tell you something about the color it appears. So ones like this right here will appear sort of bluer. Whereas ones way down here will appear redder. Um, ones like a G star, those will appear sort of yellow. I know it's hard to read the word yellow here, but something like this. And if you haven't already guessed then, well, what kind of star is our own? It's a yellow star, so our own sun, for example, is one of these. So we're actually one of these stars right here. So the sun is a G star. Now, yes, there's a jeans company called G star. I don't know if they had it named at all based on this, but our sun is actually called a G star. Now, some students try to remember these spectral classes in order. And there's a little trick, there's a little sort of mnemonic to help you with this. Okay, so O, B, A, F, G, K, M. And it's uh, maybe a little bit sexist, but it's uh, O, B, a fine girl, kiss me. 
um, which sounds really maybe lame. I remember uh, I asked my class, I asked my students, why don't you come up with your own? And I remember there was a girl in the class, she came up with an awesome one. She said, oh, be a feminist, go kill men. Well, hopefully not uh, killing men, but it was just to help her remember it. So O-B-A-F-G-K-M. That sort of tells you the spectral class of stars. Now, if you want to see it in a little bit more detail, you can actually see this list right here. This tells you the same thing, except in a lot greater detail. And uh, so what it does, O-B-A-F-G-K-M. Do you notice there's other types? So these right here are extra. That's because they've started detecting even fainter ones. Because remember, this tells you something about their color here. So it's conventional color, for example. So these are red, and these are blue, and they can be white and yellow and stuff. These are actually even dimmer. So they've actually started detecting really, well, even cooler stars. So because of that, uh, they've had to sort of set new spectral classes. So there's extra ones. There's L and there's T's. Um, now what we can do is you can also take a look at the masses of them. And look, these O stars, not only are they very hot, they're a lot more massive than the sun. Remember this little circle with a dot means sun. So they're more than 16 times the mass of the sun. And uh, so you can take a look at these ones right here. And obviously the ones with G stars are around the mass of the sun. That should make sense. And it turns out that's also related to the size of them. So these are here are bigger than 6.6 .6 times the size of the sun, whereas these ones over here are roughly the same size as the sun, and these over here are smaller. And we can talk about the luminosity, um, which tells you something about um, how much, well, energy per unit time they put out. In other words, what's the power? This tells you something real about the stars. So this, these stars are 30,000 times the luminosity of the sun, so they're much, much brighter if you're right near it. Whereas, obviously, G stars are roughly the same as the sun, and these ones are here are way, way less than the sun. And we even have something about the fraction of all main sequence stars, which means of the stars that are burning hydrogen to helium, that's what this means, right? Main sequence means burning hydrogen to helium in the core. While a star is sort of happily burning this, you know, converting hydrogen to helium and giving you light. That light, by the way, is what you see, and that makes it, you know, that makes it exciting. Um... But if you look, O stars make a very small percent of main sequence stars. And actually it turns out they also don't live very long. So these stars burn really, really fast and they die out. So they sort of live fast and die young, these ones. And of course then the um, cooler the stars you get, the longer they live. And you can also see that main sequence stars, well 76% of the main sequence stars we see are M class. And some of that actually is just because, um, like I said, these ones live longer, so they're around longer for us to even see them and look at them. So that's actually kind of fun to see. That. And you can see, of course, more than 100%. Well, it's difficult to be more than 100%, but basically, you know, this would be sort of a little bit odd to look at. But I think it's pretty fun to take a look at this uh, table right here and have an idea what kind of different things we can tell from stars. Now, of course, in the next videos, we're going to talk about different types of stars and how we can actually plot, then, a lot of these results in a very nice visual way. So we're going to be looking at later on called the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And I think that's really nice because it puts together a lot of this stuff in a very nice visual way. So we'll be doing that in a couple of videos from now.